let's get into the training camp <laughs> talk here. So first off, we have the uh, training camp edition from the 30th years. We didn't give you that report. We're talking so much about hard knocks and new players. We didn't get a chance to give you guys that yet. So on the 30th there, Giants participated on a uh, started off with a nine on seven drill there. Now, for those who might not be familiar with a nine on seven drill, basically think of it as the offense in a double tight end set with no wide receivers. You got the running back, the quarterback, the five linemen, the two um, um, tight ends, and that's where you're going with. And then on defense, it, you're just playing against the front seven. So the, the line and the, and the linebackers there. So uh, basically it's a drill you use though to go ahead and you know test your, your run defense and your run offense at that point there. So uh, the offense though definitely won the battle overall. Uh, Daniel Bellinger, which is good to hear some good news about him there, uh, was given credit for sealing the edge multiple times there for some big runs. It should be noted though that Dexter Lawrence did not participate because of the illness he's been fighting. So that and does make a side, difference. And what side was Belly on? Uh, bellies are on both sides that's the mine is <laughs> it's <laughs> robust but it's 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 it just got to be noted that though because if you take out the best nose tackle in all of the nfl yeah no wonder the offense was winning against the defense there shocker who would have thought hmm. who would have thought and wait so. and evan neal's on pup right yeah, Evan. Well, just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. He's, he's yeah. Still, yeah, he's still on the pup. He's still barely the team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't for that contract, he'd probably be gone. Um, one on one drills though happen again. I mean, those are fun to watch. I love watching the videos of that. Uh, Andrew Thomas was absolutely the star of the drill. Uh, Aaron Stinney, Josh Azudu, Jermaine Illuminor, and Jalen Mayfield also look pretty good in the drill. On defense, Jordan Phillips, DJ Davidson, Raheem Nunez Roches, Timmy Horn. Jordan Riley, Aziz Alargy, <laughs> Aziz Ojalari, and Brian Burns all had wins during the drill as well. Uh, on the one-on-ones, on the receiver and defensive backs side there, uh, Daniel Jones threw a nice deep ball over to Isaiah Hodgins for a touchdown. Tommy DeVito threw a, a touchdown to undrafted rookie John Giles as well. Uh, Andrew Phillips also grabbed an interception, and Trey Hawkins broke up a pair of passes as well. So... Good news on offense and defense, which also, of course, means bad news on offense and yes. defense. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah, part yeah. of this whole thing. Like, it's so it's it's so hard to like pinpoint. Like, you notice, like, what people are saying right now is like, "Oh my God, Malik Neighbors, he's always open. He's just he's just you know just un- uncovered." Covering, which means that Banks yeah. is not looking good. Uh, exactly, and I'm not trying to play devil's advocate to the negativity here. I'm just saying understand that either one of them is a possible scenario and i think we'll have a better idea of how good everybody is doing joint practices next week and you know when the preseason kind of starts there uh against the lions but you know it's a good team but i think people just like i said take everything with a certain grain of salt in these stuff here um but if you're doing something good and you keep on being mentioned in these reports chances are you're having a good camp that's that's the biggest take you can have away from this thing to so um during team drills, uh, Javarius Owens. We got a Javarius Owens signing here. This is the first. Oh. This is the first Javarius Owens sighting. I think all training camp, uh, deflecting the ball to himself to secure an interception. Barely got his feet on the sideline as well as a really nice kind of like uh, almost like a wide receiver esque kind of interception catch there. Uh, Nick McLeod had back to back pass deflections and almost got an, an uh, interception. Bobby O'Karake and Timmy Horn had nice run stops. Uh, Andrew Phillips got a pass deflection. Cordell Flott knocked a pass away intended for neighbors. Uh, Brian Burns uh, almost got an interception after a pass was deflected at the uh, line of scrimmage by Jordan Riley. Kayvon Thibodeau, uh, sorry, Brian Burns, Kayvon Thibodeau, Deontay Johnson, and Andrew Adams all had pressures that could have been sacks. Wandale Robinson and Dennis Houston both had uh, sliding catches as well during the drills there. So, like I said, positive on both sides there. Um you know, and of course, the the biggest thing is now that he's signed, you do see some Greg Van Roten also going on to there as well. And the fun thing for Dable right now, because we all know Dable loves doing this, there's cross training going on also because of the JMS injury at that point. So John Michael Schmitz with the shoulder injury still hasn't been playing in these these camps. So you've had Greg Van Roten has has gone in at center. You've had John Runyon Jr. has played center. 
you know, you're, you, they're doing a little bit of moving around here, which I think is interesting. I would have thought you put Schlotman in personally at that point there, since he's potentially your backup center. But no, they're they're kind of trying to see what these guys can do, which makes you wonder if Schlotman may be on the bubble, or is it just they just Ooh. care that much about cross training these guys at different positions? Either yeah, one's think, a possibility. Yeah, because I mean, let's let's think about it. Like, it's like people have are usually at two schools in my like you want your line to be kind of like three middle. team six. Yes, well. <laughs> I'm a high school. You want, <laughs> you want to you want your line to be like either the dudes, this is the wall that you built, these are the guys you're there, these are the backups, or there's some people like they like the way other people work, and some coaches like the interchangeability of like, all right, your guard, let's go to tackle, all right, your guard, let's go to center. Like they they, they like the, the ability to switch over it's just the way you understand what the guy next to you is doing. You're not wrong for either of those thoughts. You're not because, like, it does help the play overall on both sides. Listen, as far as but, I'm concerned, you but, put in the guys who you want starting because this is a training camp. You got three out of five guys with new positions on your offensive line. You're not you wrong. get another guy who's injured. Not, so that makes the only guy from last year right now on that offensive line is Andrew Thomas. Correct. And you, listen, I'm not saying what's right or wrong. I'm just, there's but those are the two school uh, school thoughts there. One school and is wrong. The, see that you're singing right. That's fine, but <laughs> they're not wrong because, like, listen, you want the you want the wall. School. <laughs> you want the wall there, but you also want you want the player that's the guy playing guard to understand what his tackles doing and what his center's doing. Like, you want the guy, you want the interchangeability. You want the tackle to understand what the guard's doing. Yeah. So, like, playing those positions helps you understand them better. Right, you go back and forth so this way you kind of know what each other would do in that situation. It's not a wrong thing to do, but at the same time, we got burnt the first year Dable was there by trying to do the wall. It's all about and then last year, then last year they tried to do the interchangeability thing. They got burnt with that as well. Oh. And they so might have been more that... burnt by Bobby Johnson. They were burnt by anything else, to be honest here. Which you're not wrong. So call it like it is. You're not wrong. I'm just I don't like to speak. Yeah, yeah, you gotta bring it up. Like, listen, if like you want to talk about this and that, like you want to talk about the pros and cons, but you also have to lay down the history of what happened here. So, like, we had we wanted these other players, this is where we're gonna play. Injury happened, line fell apart. Last year, you're like, oh, let's go soft. Well, yeah, I mean Bobby Johnson didn't help either, but you know, (laughs) last year you tried to have them all play different roles, figure out who's gonna be what, and they all play like jello because no one played the same spot. No one gelled together. Yeah. So, to me, it's just the big thing, though, is that I understood a little more last year because you had a lot of returning paces, you know, at least in training camp. Later on, when the injuries happened, all new people came in and stuff like that. But going into the season, there was a lot of, you know, people that were the same as the prior year. This year, you know, you got left guard is going to be new, right guard is going to be new, right tackle is going to be new, and depending on what happens with JMS and this injury and how long he's out for, center might be new for a little bit as well. Yeah, like so this is uh, continuity with these guys. You do, but here's also the issue: who's who's our right tackle? Jermaine Illuminor. Uh What other position do, does he play? Left, left uh, guard is where he was actually oh, at sorry, as well. So, yeah, that's, that's when we position. got him. So, yeah, that's where. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> Who's playing our left guard? Uh, right now, Aaron Stinney yeah, or John Runyon or yeah. Craig Bren Roden. So what I'm getting at is a lot of these guys are interchangeable as it is. So the Giants also might be trying to figure out who plays the best at what position with the guys next to them. Yeah, we'll see. I think they're just trying. I think they're just trying to be crazy. That's what I think. <laughs> That's what you think, put, but it also they could in, be doing. Put them in and keep them in. Let them get get used to playing together. They're not used to playing together. Uh, how many Raiders do we have on the team now? How many? How many? What? How many Green Bay players do we have on the team now? Green Bay players, one on the offensive line. Yeah, we Raiders. have two Raiders. Yeah. So the two Raiders could, guys are used to playing each other. That's but but if you're if you're throwing Greg, Greg Van Ruten over at at center. That's not, really helping, stuff around. that's not also helping Jermaine a little bit. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> like this is this is this is uh, yeah, they may, like I wouldn't go crazy over a July training camp day of changing I, players up. 
I'm not going crazy, but I am suggesting we need some continuity, and I want to see them put him in spots, leave him in spots, and call it a day. Let them get used to playing next to each other. Because poor Andrew Thomas, that guy has had so many, so many guys next to him. It's not even funny. Like, like he changes side pieces more often than Leonardo DiCaprio. It's horrible. (laughs) Probably about the same age, too. They probably are, because <laughs> by the time they hit 25, they realize they're shitty players, and they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> shitty side pieces? <laughs> uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Still looks like uh, he's 30. Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> if you like that clip, then you will love the full episodes, too. Find us on your favorite podcast app, and look for us on all your favorite social media platforms. Thanks so much. Please, I'm I'm begging you. Please, please subscribe.